guys, welcome to Hashtag Behind Relationship Goals. I'm Bones and this is Fofo the Wave Clapper. And the reason why I'm calling him a wave clapper is this. Wait, <laughs> you were all over the place. Sit down and then you were like clapping <laughs> like a wave. Wave clapper na yarn. Anyway, back to the episode. For today, this episode, we are going to answer the question, how to get rich. Wow. Wow. Big question, Bonizi. I don't think I can really answer that right now. How to get rich? <laughs> Napaka loaded ng question natin today. It's gonna well, be exciting. Loaded. Loaded. Okay. <laughs> Double meaning. Okay. Ikaw it's ni loaded. <laughs> Before we even get there, why are we asking this? I think number one is social media. Yes. I actually brought this question up, so we were brainstorming on what topics to talk about and. Napansin ko lang on social media, so many people dressed up with so many names on their clothes. Basically, on social media, you see a lot of people flaunting. Flaunting expensive brands, flaunting a lot of expensive things that they might have. So, when you see these kinds of things on social media, ano yung una man isip? Why? That's just my question. Because obviously, I don't, I don't have any clothes with any names on them <laughs> but anyway i think because when we talk with our friends when we see people on social media the comments the posts by some mm. content creators they're always creating and flaunting a particular lifestyle okay and that lifestyle is supposedly a lifestyle of success and extravagance mm. and excess to a certain extent okay. i mean excess for us i think that's a point of view and okay. that's a that's a subjective view yeah but I wanted to discuss this because at the same time, on the other side, when you look at the news, you read this growing inequality in wealth and happiness in the world. Yeah. That the wealth gap, the divide between the top 1% and the other 90% is getting wider and wider by the day, by the month. You mm -hmm. look at inflation, you look at world finance, and supposedly there are so many problems Yet on social media and a lot of the content that we consume and that we see, that's not what you get. That's not the world that you see from them. Yeah, so I wanted to answer this question because it seems like there's overwhelmingly just one way of, of looking at being it. rich. Or being successful. Or being successful. And I think because we're bombarded by these images, sometimes you can't help it. You can brainwash ka to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. na parang, Ay, gusto ko rin yung bag na yan na sobrang mahal. Yeah. Or gusto ko rin yung t-shirt na yan na may dalawang letra. At dahil may dalawang letra na yun, kailangan bilhin ko even though it's 50 times the price of a regular shirt. Okay, so going back to when I asked you, how do you feel when you see these kinds of posts on social media? You said, why? But the other side of that, I mean the people that like to flaunt what they have or they, they like to show off things that they may have worked hard for, the other side to that is, why not? Because they're hiring them. That's a really, really good point. Diba? So parang for other people, diba, there's this mindset din na, syempre, even though you're working hard and you're saving, you also have things that you want to spend on for yourself. So ito yung parang treating yourself, kumbaga, yung I deserve these things because I work The culture hard. of deserve. Deserve. <laughs> <laughs> deserve ko to. So syempre, there are two sides to yes. every story, diba? And we may be on the flip side na we... Hindi tayo mahilig bumili ng mga designer items. We put our money elsewhere. Maybe we save a lot more, or maybe we spend it on other things that hindi lang napapakita sa social media, de ba? So I think there's always like going to be a different kind of perspective when it comes to money, when it comes to quote unquote riches, and when it comes to spending on what you think you feel like you deserve in your life. Very right, Bonizi. There is no right or wrong. Yeah. I think that the way people want to spend their hard-earned money or whatever they have Discretion na nila yun. is completely up to them and nobody can judge them for yeah. it. However, however, I think the fact does remain that because it is mostly what we see, mm. like easily, almost like 90% of the content that you consume, I guess abides by this kind of culture. Yeah, I think it adds a lot of pressure to 100% of the people watching it. 
it adds pressure to me also. Because for me, like when I'm scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and I see people of our age or people that we work with, I'm like, wow, they have like so many of these things. Like, napapa isip ako na even though hindi ako mahilig bumili ng ganitong items, I think I appreciate this and I do like it. I used to really like buying these things. Tapos napapa second guess ako sa sarili ko and you know my principles on how I observe money. Na should I start buying things like this or parang gusto ko naren kasi it looks na dadala so ka na dadala ako na parang it's natural minsan nakakita ko na parang gusto ko rin matabi na kaya ako ng pera para dito so parang naiisip ko na or benta ko na si Soba para mabili ko to syempre never ko naisip yon <laughs> ewan ko sa iyo kung maiisip mo yan <laughs> benta ko kaya si Popo para mas marami akong BTS merch <laughs> sige go syempre hindi ko gagawin yun pamine no you're mine <laughs> <laughs> na mine na po <laughs> Anyways, going back to the topic. Ikaw ba may mga ganun moments ka ba na pag nakikita mo na pressure ka ba or nadadala ka din sa mga nakikita mong posts? I guess to a certain extent, hindi naman siya nadadala pero it makes you think and it really makes you question. I think like we had this conversation, there was an event sometime earlier this year and when you talk to you know, some of the people who are inviting you to the event are going to help you get ready for the event. Yeah. Para there was like, ay, what bag are you going to bring? Mm. Kasi, syempre, lahat ng mga ibang pupunta sa event na yun, may certain stature yung bag na dadalhin nila. Okay. Branded yan. May certain cost yung bag na dadalhin nila. So, ako, I was like, huh? Saan yan? For you? No, for you. For you. For ah, you. sa event. Yeah. So I didn't the, have the, a bag. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, but that conversation came up before yeah, the did, event. Na parang, like, should you buy a bag? Of course, it came to mind, right? I was yeah. like, oh, okay. So this is the norm. You, we work in show business, a business of showing. It made me think, right? When otherwise, I would not think about it. It would not even cross my mind to spend six digits on a bag. Yeah. So it, it makes me think and I can imagine it influencing others and making others think and really not necessarily distorting but really influencing. We are in the age of influencers. Yes, yes we are. So kahit tayo, nay influence rin tayo. It's just a matter of what happens at the end. What decision do we make? So when it comes to like these designer stuff, of course, ako, I really like looking. And you know yeah. this, that I always like window shop. It's nice I always, to look at. I always look, you know, on my browser to see like what's new. And then, you know, I was looking through like the comments and then one person was like, like you don't even have any designer stuff. Like oh, are really? you even successful? But I keep super tagal na nito. Super okay. tagal na. Like in the past couple of years. Para you don't have like these things. Like are you successful? Just na paisip ako. Para dapat ba may ganyan ako para alam ng tao yung hard work na ginagawa ko. Parang kasi I would hear na there were other artists before na kada project nila bibili sila ng designer shoe or designer bag. Dapat ba may ganun ako? Kasi na feel ko na parang okay, yeah, I'll buy like merch here and there but and I'll buy like tech stuff. Yun yung parang quote and quote deserve ko na item. So parang does it always have to be something clothing or accessories? Because I remember when I won Miss World, I bought myself a laptop. Yes. <laughs> that was my I deserve expensive item that I bought. I mean, I thought of buying a designer bag, but I never did in that year. So it's pretty interesting how people also view other people's successes. Na, eh, wala ka namang ganyan eh. Bakit si ganito ganyan? Mas maraming designer items kaysa sayo. You know, when you telling that story kind of brings maybe one of the major points of this episode to a head right now, which is we live in the day of social media mm. and influencership. We are being influenced left and right. Wherever we look, we have a screen in front of us. And to a certain extent, there's almost always influencer content wherever yeah. we go. I mean, we create influencer content. Tayo nga, di ba? So parang, hindi mo talaga may iwasan na maapektuhan. Even though you don't even realize it. But I think what this has done, however, is because there's a certain lifestyle and culture that is prevalent in the content that we consume nowadays. I think most people, even us, we tend to forget that there are many different ways of achieving certain things. Yeah. So how to get quote unquote rich can actually be done in many different ways. Yun lang, when you're bombarded with just one certain way yeah. of doing it and achieving it, minsan nakakalimutan mo. Nakakalimutan mo yung essence talaga. 
yeah, you just realize na, oh, oh, this is the only way to get quote-unquote rich. Yes. This is the only way to feel successful and feel fulfilled and happy. And this is the only thing that I deserve. Okay, so if what we're going to do today is we're going to have a discussion about our own personal experience. Yes. We're going to pull this back. Yeah, we're going to pull it back a bit because, like we said, people have different ways of, you know, experiencing life, experiencing their hard-earned money. And for other people, it might be buying a lot of things. It might be buying one big, you know, splurge item. So, you do you, diba? Pero ito yung sa experience namin. This is what, I guess, it's made us happy. Mm -mm. It's also our personality to do these kinds of things. And I think at the end of the day, we decided this as a couple na ito yung gagawin natin moving forward when it comes to our finances, when it comes to our work, when it comes to extra money that we might have on the side. What do we do with it? So basically, what we're going to be explaining or sharing in this episode is an exercise mm -hmm. to help us stay grounded and not get lost in the sauce. Yeah. Because it's so easy to get lost in the sauce. So you see Kim K and Kanye and, you know, all these YouTube content creators, like, wearing all these amazingly cool stuff and it's very eye-catching. Yeah. And sometimes when your eyes are caught, parang nawawala ka na talaga, nalulula oh, ka na talaga. Oh, we are going to share how we try to avoid falling into these uh, pitfalls. So with that, let's get to it. So Bonizi, we have this standard culture that we see on mm -hmm. social media. But let's set that aside now. Okay. And let's get into the bones and fofo culture. Okay, let's start it with our... I would say this is like our step one. Because this is where... It's like the root of everything else. Okay. So the first thing that we discussed is what kind of lifestyle do we want to live? As bones and fofo, what is your lifestyle? That what would make us feel happy, fulfilled, quote unquote, rich? <laughs> yes, what would that be for us? For me, I think I would like to start off the discussion with the phrase, having enough. Okay. Because I think that ever since we were young, lalo na ako, mm. there was always this pressure to have more. Because? More and more and be successful in your life. Have more. Like your parents would say, I want you to have more than what I have. You, want have, you have to be better than this and that. Be, be an improved version of us. There's always this concept of having more and generating more and being more successful. Okay. Having a bigger house. Having more houses. Having more money. Having more of this, more of that. More hype beast clothing. More hype beast items. So basically, it was never enough. It was never enough. So you would always be chasing something at the end of the day. So you know, flip side. Even though they wanted you to want to achieve more, every time that you did, every time that you overcame an obstacle, it was still never enough. Oh, oh, laging parang, oh my God, nabili ko na yung first car ko. What ano an next? achievement. And then all of a sudden, a week after, pag nawala na yung hype at yung saya mo doon, biglang, ay, kailan ka magkaka-sports car? Or, if you see somebody else with something faster, something more expensive. Oh, oh, or a shirt with more letters on it. <laughs> Mas maraming palm print. Mas mahal. <laughs> <laughs> then you would want to push for it. Parang like social media, di ba? Parang Biglang, pressure. Minsan na pressure ka. Okay. Yun yung mindset na inilaan ng family mo sa'yo. I mean, not necessarily my family, but it's the mindset that I felt growing up. Ah, okay. Parang yun yung nakikita mo at nafe-feel mo. Yeah, that was the societal pressure that I felt. Mm. And parang mas lalo lang lumakas yung pressures ngayon with the age of influencers and social media and content creation. Yeah. But now that you said it, so succinctly, you said nothing's enough. It's never enough. Never that's, enough. That's why we're gonna go to what we try to practice and what we always try to discuss openly between yeah. each other. It's having enough. Having enough. Grabe no? Parang when you think of having enough, that doesn't mean that you're not trying to achieve big things. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're not trying to go for your goals. But I think it equates to being content with what you have and not feeling pressured to be so extravagant like other people or be something that's above your means also. I think the concept of having enough is... Being able to literally live within what is immediately in front of you mm. 
and be presently happy. Yes. Like right now, okay, right now, you and I, we're sitting on a couch, you have a cup of coffee, I have a cup of coffee with some milk waiting for me here. In this moment, I'm not thinking about the money in a bank account. I'm not thinking about what assets we have. I'm not thinking about what car we have in the garage. I'm thinking that right now, I'm with my wife, we're having coffee, we're talking on a camera. This is our work to a certain extent. Yeah. And this is enough. Okay. I'm happy with this. Okay, this is your mindset now. Okay? Right now. Let's do the flip side. If you were you before you met me, like your mindset na parang I always have to go like get more and more and more. How do you think? I would have thought. You would have thought. It's an exercise lang. Oh, I would have thought, de, kailangan mas maganda yung couch na to, kailangan leather, tas branded. Tas kailangan yung camera, kailangan cinema camera na sobrang ganda. Mm. Kailangan yung ilaw ko, mga Ari lights. Ta. Tapos kailangan, hindi tayo nag-shoot ng podcast sa condo natin, kailangan studio. sa studio, <laughs> sa reeling studio. <laughs> Bahay na may studio. <laughs> okay, gets, gets. No, but I mean, t- the ba? So all of a sudden, I'm talking about the exact same thing. Yeah. But I talked about it from two completely different points of view. Yes. One where I'm, I'm super duper happy doing this with you right now. And then the next point of view was someone who looked down on this and thinking, this is not enough. Yeah. You need to do more. And I think that aspiring for more it's not bad. It's not a bad thing. It's Definitely not a bad. Not. It's something that you can work on every day and something that you can look forward to. But the thing is, every single one of us live in the present. I think that it's so important that in the present, you are able to say you have enough. Yes. And you while, are okay. While working hard to achieve the goals that you have set for yourself. Yeah. I think I have a lot of uh, people around me who feel this way. Na they will only be happy in the end. Yeah. Like, so when they've achieved all goal? their goals and they've had however much money they want and however nice cars they want, pero the journey, wala silang uh, And sad. for me, okay, that's okay. I mean, if that's the mindset that they want, then... So be it. So be it. That's not for me to judge. However, for you and me, parang I think you and I, the, we've decided that we really want to live our lives in the present. And we yeah. want to make sure that the present, we have enough. The reason why I said sad because of that mindset is because when I look back at all the things that I did, if I didn't enjoy in that moment, then I would have been sad na wala akong mababalikan na memories or na wala akong mababalikan na small moments that I could look back on and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was able to enjoy it like that. And I can't believe I was able to really experience that kind of journey. For example, Miss World. Diba? It's a competition. They're like, some people might have said, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to like win a competition. But for me, I was there and I enjoyed every single day talking to different people because I knew that I could learn from girls and women all around the world. And I made friends. And I'm so happy that I got to experience the competition like that rather than, you know, being away from everyone thinking competition, competition, competition. I enjoyed it. And I thought at that very moment on the finals, manalo man ako matalo, I had such a fun time here. So I guess you felt like you had enough at that time. You were happy with what you had. It was enough yeah. for you. It just so happens that later on, you got a lot more. But hey, it's cool, right? <laughs> yes, luck played on my side. But I mean, if you think about it, okay, yes, I won the competition, but if I had that mindset that I would just be happy after my end goal, what about the rest of my life? Yeah. Diba? Like, I can't just think, okay, ito na yon, masaya na ako, then what comes next? Shepard, there's going to be another journey right after that. It's the journey after you win. What happens like to our relationship? That was also another journey that, you know, I was excited about after that. So, and daming possibilities na pwede mangyari. And if you just focus on the end goal rather than the journey, parang, parang sayang, sayang yung mga moments. Well, I guess to summarize what you're saying, if life is a collection of a million moments, mm. and that one millionth moment, you actually get everything that you want. But you're only gonna be happy on that one millionth moment because that was the only time that you truly got everything you wanted. And all the other moments before that, you were just grumpy and you weren't aware and you weren't making the most out Mm -hmm. of it. Then I guess to a certain extent, from our perspective, that's a bit sad because Mm -hmm. 
that was 99.99999% of your life that you only told yourself, I am only happy and it was only validated because I reached this one millionth moment. <laughs> so, But you can't help it. Other people think yes, like that also. Yes. So we're kind of just comparing and contrasting. I think it's really important. I think it's so easy to be swayed and to allow the way we think to be dictated by the things that we see. And that is okay. Mm-mm. But I think what would be more important is to take a step back and really criticize and analyze what you see and compare it against what you want and what kind of person and life you want to have and what you want to be. Yeah, and there are perspectives from you know outside of your safe space, right? Yeah. Like for the decisions that you make in life, for the things that make you happy. People have, you know, sometimes like a 360 point of view from how you think and what makes you happy. And sometimes they try to put pressure on you na dapat ganito ka lang, dapat ganito ka para maging masaya ka. But at the end of the day, if you just, you know, take a little bit in and just try to analyze, okay, maybe these are the things that make me happy. Maybe these are the things na I just put aside because it's not so important in my life. And then focus on you. And then I think then you'll truly be happy once you know what you want. Talaga. I remember that when I started vlogging, I've always been into tech. Mm. So I started out with a point and shoot camera. And then later on, syempre, I would think, how do I get nicer quality images and film yeah. and footage? So I would think, okay, how can I upgrade this? And I would start to research and you know watch other people and watch yeah. other YouTube videos. Oh my God, maybe I can go to an SLR camera. And then you, from an SLR camera, there are different upgrades that you can have. And then I think it got to a point that I got to a really nice full frame camera already. Mm. You know, nice lens, yep. nice microphone. But there was always something more. There's always something better. And it just got to a point when I was like, this is silly. Yeah. Why do I need to keep on upgrading? But for a certain point, for a certain time in my life, I drew happiness only because of that upgrade. Mm. I drew happiness on the upgrade just for the sake of upgrading but it didn't really matter as much anymore yeah there wasn't any material or tangible difference in upgrading because i was just uploading to youtube yeah. para lang masabi mo nag upgrade ka parang yun na yung hinahabol ko parang no naalala ko tuloy nung first bili ko na designer bag sobrang pinilit pa ako nung time na yun ng handlers ko na mm-hmm. megan kailangan talaga may designer handbag ka kasi artista ka so parang I don't know if I got the pressure or if I really wanted the bag. But I really, a bit of both, a bit of both, a bit I think of both. it was like in the middle. Pero, it's never just one thing. But I realized that now, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. They were telling me that you need an artist, you need a designer handbag. Ka. So for the longest time, I only had one. Because I was like, you told me to buy a designer bag, so I'm keeping this. And I had that bag for like more than 10 years. Wala na yung bag na yun, no? I sold it na. <laughs> but we sold it recently. Yeah. But I had that for more than 10 years talaga. And for the longest time, that was my only bag. Yeah, and, and Bones, I mean, when it gets to the camera, back to that story, just to close it up, I'm happy with what we have already. I mean, we're yeah. lucky to have some really nice gadgets. But parang even though that every year, every six months, there's an upgrade, there's a new mm-hmm. item that you could possibly get, parang we just need to call it quits at some point. Yeah. And I think that that's a nice exercise that we've had. And it's nice for us to share with everyone na parang there's always going to be something more and something out there. But I think to be able to be happy and say that you have enough and that what you have is enough. And there's a certain superpower to that. Sometimes I really need to go back to this conversation whenever Hybe drops new merch from BTS because Every week they're dropping new stuff. Help me, army. Actually, we're just having this conversation <laughs> para bawas ni Bones yung merch na binibili niya sa BTS. <laughs> <laughs> Help me! I can't. It's so hard. I want everything. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're at that stage right now. But okay, so let's talk about that because I think it's so interesting na you know people want to buy like designer items or they want to buy more gadgets like what you said ako naman I like buying merch let's talk about this let us talk about this so Bonizi what is enough for you like to be honest with you if you really wanted to and you went all out you could fill a whole closet full of merch yeah but what is the point oh nga what is the point actually you know what I want I wanted to buy the album and I realized this na parang I don't want to buy like the toys anymore and one of the co-armies that I'm in a group with said na there are some army that just buy 
a certain type of merch which is called the memories and these are all like behind the scenes videos the albums from that year kasi pag natapos na yung time ng BTS or when they retire na from producing music then ito yung pinaka memories nila so they don't need to buy like the stuffed toys or like the other kind of merch ito lang para pwede nilang balik-balikan because they're super diehard fans I like that you know why I like that kasi there's thoughtfulness to it pinag-isipan nila why am I buying this yes. rather than just BTS buy BTS buy Jin buy Jin buy basta may mukha ni Jin buy so parang for me I'm like <laughs> I get na tutuwa ka and okay lang naman matuwa mm-hmm. for a certain time but syempre if this is really going to last for a longer period of time and it seems that you know uh, BTS will keep producing yeah. you will keep armying for me parang it's better to maybe build a framework already and really think about what part do I really like and what part of them would I really want to keep yeah. because it means a lot to me so parang you're cutting out the low value fruit and the high value fruit. Yeah. Like which of this is valuable to you? Impossible to say mo lahat. Oh oh, because it's never everything. Alam ko na ngayon kung ano yung gusto ko, and it's it's that. I really want to have that parang the album one, so that pwede kong balik balikan yung mga moments na yon, yung mga smaller moments that added up to that year. So there. So. I think you just saw it in real time, Bonizi and I, talking exercising what we were talking about. <laughs> okay, so we just talked about having enough, mm-hmm. being aware of what you have, and being happy with it in the moment. Yes. And of course, it isn't bad looking forward and improving oneself in one's mm-hmm. current situation. But here's the thing, Bonizi. Sometimes, because when you work to improve yourself, means and fail. Just like in any job, sometimes you get fired, sometimes you don't do well, sometimes the way you envision your progression just doesn't seem to pan out the way you imagined it. And I think that's why sometimes some people are afraid. They're afraid to work, they're afraid to improve, and they're afraid to work hard for things that they want because it's not a surefire thing. I remember somebody very close to me said na that they may anxiety siya with working so hard kasi nasasayang lang yung effort niya in the end dahil nagfe-feel siya or dahil hindi siya nag-live up dun sa expectations ng colleagues niya, ng boss niya. So, nagkaroon siya ng anxiety dahil, shucks, ayoko na mag-work hard kasi wala rin naman visa. So, in the end, hindi siya nagfo-focus na sa sarili niya kasi ang naisip niya agad, failure. Yes. So, natakot na siya to work hard kasi feeling niya, walang napupuntahan to. I have another example, just to support that, okay? okay? This time in our work naman, sa acting. I think there's a certain pressure that comes pag sobrang ginalingan mo, okay? So parang let's say that there's a crying scene. And alam naman natin, you know, when it comes to a crying scene, parang mas maraming attention yung binibigay dun kasi supposedly mas mahirap at siya yung pinapansin lagi sa mga teleserye. Yeah. So kung wari, may crying scene ako, tas sobrang ginalingan ko. The problem with that, kung sobrang ginalingan ko at successful ako dun, may expectation. biglang, may expectations na sila. Hmm. In all the next succeeding difficult scenes or crying scenes or emotional scenes, ang taas bigla ng expectation. Yeah. And I've literally heard from some co-actors and some colleagues na parang, nako, yoko galingan kasi mag expect sila, mag expect Ang hirap naman ng ganun. May ganun. So parang, pag may tulo lang yung ay, so yung so gagawin nila, kailangan. parang gusto kasi ah, nila easy-easy lang. Ah, okay. Gusto nila easy-easy lang. Tapos kung ginalingan nila, assuming of course kaya nilang galingan, di ba? Oh. Some people say, hindi, ayoko galingan kasi magkaka-expectation sila. Pero that could also be because you're scared that you don't have enough talent yeah, or yeah. you can't do it. Yeah. Ba? But regardless of di ba, the reasons for doing it, the fact of the matter remains. There is that fear and anxiety of working hard regardless mm. of why you do it or why you don't work hard it's there it's present yeah and i think that is born out of a lot of pressure from other people pressure again pressure ulit. and i think it's born out of pressure and the fear of failure and i think that everybody should always work so hard to take those two things out of their mind 
and it's the, one of the most difficult things to do. I think it's super important when you have a support system or you have someone really important to you being there to guide you and to remind you that it is okay to fail mm. and it is okay to try hard. Yeah, and I think when you reach a point that you fail, it's important to always backtrack. Yeah. Bakit ako nagfail sa bagay na to? And to, I guess, take a recap also. Kasi when we have moments that we're down or like we're doubting ourselves, we talk to each other. And we look back, okay, why did this particular thing not work out for you? Or why did this particular thing not work out in the way that I imagined? So we look back at how our attitude was, how our work ethic was, how our mindset was at that time. And maybe they didn't align for us to succeed. But... That doesn't mean that we're going down the ladder of, you know, improving yeah, yeah, ourselves. Yeah. Because these are all baby steps. And like you mentioned earlier, these are the little moments that take you up to the one millionth moment that you're going to succeed. So it can't always be success because you also need the failures to help you realize what you need to improve. So mm-hmm. hindi mo pwedeng iwasan ang failure. Dahil kasama talaga yan sa improvement natin. I mean, I've come to the point where I think I look forward to a certain extent to failure because that's also an opportunity to learn. Mm. I mean, hindi ako magiging perfect ever. Nobody's so, perfect. <laughs> Nobody gets it right because on the first Because sobrang aware ako na hindi ako magiging perfect ever. Yeah. Like, never mangyayari yun. I might as well look forward to failing because that's usually the, also the moment that you can learn. Yeah. The point of failure, if you look at it from a pessimist way, is your lowest point. But if you look at it from an optimist way, the point of failure is also the point where you can learn the most. Yeah. Because when you're succeeding, it's hard to learn because you're feeling mo, tama na ako eh. Tama na yung ginagawa ko eh. What more is there to learn? So it's hard to get in that learning mindset. But when you fail and you can kind of shift your mindset and tell yourself, oh my gosh, this is the best time where I can learn as much as I can. Because there's so much to improve on. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, ito na nga. So, how do we connect that to parang being rich? Or like, how to be rich in life? So, we've already discussed that part of what we do is knowing to have enough. But the second part is continually trying. Because I think stagnation is kind of sad and boring. Yeah. Diba? Nothing happens. Why are you living life kung wala kang gagawin? Nandun ka lang. Uh-oh. Hindi ka gumagalaw. So I think to live life is to move and improve and want to improve. Yeah. But to want to improve is to work. And if you're going to work, might as well work hard. Might yeah. as well give it everything you got. Yeah. But then again, we got to that point that working hard is scary. It is scary, pero I feel like So now we're sharing like what motivates us and how do we move past that fear? Yeah. And I think working hard to an- another extent. So we discussed like what are the fears and anxieties of working hard? And why is it scary? On the flip side, there's also a lot of spite or spitefulness that come come out of it. Because when we all work, we don't work in solo. We work as a group with other people. Yeah. And I remember that there was this one person in my life who went up to me and said, it's so annoying that I have to work so hard for this one thing. Tapos yung colleague ko, sobrang talented, Nagagawa niya yung gusto niyang gawin without working hard. Have you ever felt that? Yes. Diba? Like, I, some people in are... acting, once again, crying scene. Some people are just so, so amazingly talented and so good that whatever scene they read, they're just so good at it. Yeah. Parang, or sa games. Gets sa... nila games in like Dota. Bakit? Ang bilis nila makuha yung laro. Tapos ako, I have to study oh, so much. At bakit may makuha. dexterity yung kamay nila? Bakit nagigets nila? Ako parang nadadapada pa pa yung mga daliri ko. <laughs> bakit may mga ganon? So minsan may insecurity then Yes. That comes with it. Because even though we work hard, parang we're intimidated by the fact that some people just get it. And then we have to work sometimes twice as hard or even 10 times harder than they do to achieve their goal. Yeah, and I think for some people, they develop negative feelings towards these people and towards these situations na, ayoko nga, why do I have to work hard for this one reward when others don't have to work at all? They're just so talented and they get this one reward. Mm -hmm. And for me, what I say to that is that the amount of work you put in to reach a goal should never ever matter and should never be compared. 
Yeah. Because why does it matter? And it's always going to be different for everyone. Yeah. And sometimes, I think another thing that we tend to forget is sometimes we don't know kung ano yung pinagdaanan ng ibang tao. Hindi natin alam yung story niya behind the scenes. Kung yeah. pa- paano siya nakarating sa punto na yon na hindi niya na kailangan paghirapan ng times 10. Hindi niya kailangan mag-exert ng ganong effort. Kasi baka mamaya in the past, grabe na pala yung steps na pinagdaanan niya, grabe din yung failure na pinagdaanan niya, hindi mo lang nakita. Minsan may mga ganong bagay din. Yeah, yeah. But still, there are a lot of cases where, you know, you have a YouTuber, they post one video for whatever reason, sobrang viral, 10 million views agad. <laughs> Unang video niya, and then you have others who have posted 300 videos and happy na sila sa 100,000 views. Diba? Nakakainis yun to a certain extent. But I think it's also really important for people not to be distracted by that. Because yeah. ultimately, what others do and the effort that they put in to achieve their own goals shouldn't affect the effort that you put in. Yeah. Because ultimately, you don't feel what they feel. You only feel what you do and what you feel. So I think to be happy to exert as much effort into your life and to squeeze your life, pigain mo, Mm-mm. lahat ng kaya mong gawin sa buhay mo. Girl! I think for me, at least for me, in my own opinion and point of view, I think that ultimately is extremely fulfilling because I can honestly say that I've had to work a million times harder to get to a point where I can be viable in a teleserie or in a TV program as opposed to some of the other artists who are just naturally talented. As in, yeah. Hindi na nila, sa totoo lang, hindi nila kailangan mag-workshop. Hindi nila kailangan magpaturo. Pero ako, kailangan ko. Lahat yun kailangan ko. And hindi ko yun ikinakahiya. Kasi para sa akin, that just so happens to be my journey. And it's yeah. a nice story to tell. Oh, the, I have more stories to tell. <laughs> diba? So there's, look, there's always something. Yeah. There's always something. If you want to all... look at it bad, you can look at it bad. Yeah. If you want to look at it good, you can look at it good. Everybody has their own journey. I think that that kind of closes this particular point, Mm-mm. which is, so we have enough, and now we're focusing on working hard to improve and, you know, reach higher goals or yeah. grow as a person. And, and don't it's downplay okay. your hard work also. So I think the last part of us, quote unquote, being rich or being rich with experiences and having enough is gratitude. Yeah, I think it wraps up everything that we've been discussing. Mm -mm. I think that it's an overarching theme in having enough, Mm. working hard. Would you say it's like the core of it? Gratitude? Yeah, I think so. I think that is a nice way of putting it. Being your core value. Being happy and having gratitude for what you have helps you get to the point to tell yourself that you have enough. Yes. And also having that gratitude for, you know, having this life, this one life, I think also leads you to be motivated to act and to act or to improve yourself and keep on working to improve yourself yes. regardless if that improvement results in success or failure. Mm-hmm. Because failure in itself is, I think, you know, progress. Yes, exactly. Fail forward. You heard that term? <laughs> yeah. Failing forward means learning from mistakes you have. Yeah. So I think gratitude is a nice bow to tie around this topic that we've been discussing. Being thankful and just being content. Yeah, just being content and I guess not comparing yourself to others. That's an easy way of saying yeah. one of the points that we've been discussing. I feel like once you start comparing yourself to other people in a negative light, that's when it all starts crumbling down because you start having self-doubts. I have a question for you, Onizi, oh. because you haven't really shared your example or your stories in terms of comparing. Ah. So how do you feel about that? Like I said how I felt na it was tough for me because there are some really talented actors and actresses yeah. out there. This is not so natural for them. What about for you? You were the first Miss World of the Philippines. But soon after that, there were many other beauty queens that popped up yeah. in the Philippines. How does that comparison happen in your mind? I feel like when I was a lot younger, I would compare their success to what I was doing. Which is natural. Yeah, I mean, it's natural. And we're we're all in the same circle. So I was thinking, should I be doing, you know, shoots like them? Should I be like putting myself out there in a certain way? Should you have another boyfriend? Of course, I never thought about that. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't think about that. But, you know, I thought... What if I start doing things the way that they are? Will that make me happy? And 
sometimes I would downplay the things that I was interested in in life, parang like games or I guess having a more low key kind of life. Like I wouldn't post a lot, especially back in the day when I was doing the pageant, when I was Miss World, I barely posted anything. So parang sometimes I thought, should I have put more of myself out there for people? Yeah, and I think a good example here is streaming. I mean, streaming was not the stereotypical path that a beauty queen would take. Mm-mm. And I think you had a lot of hesitations getting into that because you had never seen a beauty queen streamer. Yeah, I thought people would look down on me if I did yeah. that. And I yeah. thought that I wouldn't be a good representation. Yeah, but I think people. at that point you were al- allowing standards. You were allowing arbitrary and random standards imposed by content and social media and traditional media to dictate how you were going to live your life. Yeah, and who knew that at the end of the day, once I did start streaming, there was this this family that went up to me and said, my, my daughter watches your stream. And I was so thankful because I don't curse on my stream. I don't say very bad. wholesome. It's bonus. very wholesome on the stream. So for them to come to me and tell me, my daughter watches your stream. Oh my god, so I'm gonna home. So yeah, I think just being able to put myself out there in the way that I felt comfortable in, in the way that I felt passionate about, I think that's what made me happier and made me realize na I don't have to be a cookie cutter image of what the norm is for no. the career path that I want to take. Oh, hindi mo kailangan madala. Uh-oh. sa sinasabi or dinidictate ng media. So thank you dun sa family na nagsabi na pinapanood ako ng mga anak nila <laughs> yung stream ko because that kind of reassured me in a way because it made me feel like okay, maybe I am different and maybe I have like a different path to take and a different influence to put on other people. Okay, so you know what Bonizia, I think we talked about a lot of nice stories and a lot of cool concepts. I guess as we head towards the end of this podcast, maybe we could wrap it up with some more actionable things that we can share. And actionable in a way na, okay, let's get into the meat of it. How do you have enough? Especially in terms of finances, let's say you're starting out, diba? Siyempre, we know what minimum wage is here in the Philippines. And here in the Philippines, you have to grind a bit harder, especially compared to other countries. Kaya yeah. nga marami na go OFW. But I think that it's really important to be able to shift your mindset and learn how to figure out how your current situation is enough for you mm. at the moment. Because it's so hard to work hard and at the same time feel that you don't have enough. I think when I was younger, I used to journal writing things that I'm thankful for or things that I'm happy to have. And some people do it on a regular basis. Some people do it every day where they write small things that make me happy. Like today, small things that made me happy was that you're out of quarantine. (laughs) That made me super happy because I could finally be around you. Another thing was that I made yummy coffee today. That made me super happy. And the next thing that made me happy recently was that, you know, we were able to book mama ticket back home to the Philippines. Oh yeah, and tickets are so expensive now. Okay, for me, one thing that I would like to share is that Bonizi and I always talk about regularly, like maybe like every week, sometimes every day, what we want and what we want to work for. You're right, we do. I think a lot of people forget to do that, but for me and Bones, it's been extremely important. I asked Bones, Bones, we're working pretty much every day. Yeah. What do you want? What do you want to work for? What do you want to save up for? He asked me one time, what do you want to spend on? Because we hadn't been shopping. I wasn't buying merch at that time. Yeah. And you were like, what is one thing that you want to spend on? And I thought about it and I wrote down, you know, like things that I would normally want to get. Like I was like, mm, maybe I want a bag. I'm not sure. Maybe I want new shoes because my white sneakers are so, ano na, basag na basag na siya. But then at the end of the day, I was like, mm, parang I don't. No, if I want these things, talaga. Parang, it's just at the back of my head, but it's not a want want. Yeah, you like if Bonizi buys it right now, she'll be happy for like 20 minutes, and when she starts playing her video games, biglang makakalimutan na niya, and it was just a short lived happiness which wasn't lasting. Although, you know what I really want right now? And I'm not kidding about this, I want a Blu ray player. Because I can't play my albums that are Blu ray 
because I don't have a Blu-ray player. I don't even know why I bought the album in the first place. I should have just bought the digital okay, one. Okay, we'll figure that out. But anyway, yeah, and then for me, before we end, Japan is opening up. I would love to go to Japan. My Kuya is going. So one of these days, uh, I think we're trying to plan it. I'd love to save up and be able to go to Japan. Okay, so if Fofo wants to go to Japan, I want a Blu-ray player. <laughs> At least we know what we want this time. So right now we'll we'll discuss. Uh, it's not set in stone, but we have our goals, and yeah. we have to think about you know will the trip really make us happy? Will it huh? be super worth it? Even though we do know that we like traveling, I think it's still a conversation to always have. Yeah. And Bonizi says she wants a Blu-ray player. I have my doubts why we need to buy a Blu-ray player just for this one thing, but we'll discuss, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, we'll see what happens. So there you have it. That is our tips and tricks and our answer to the question, how to get rich. Hindi siya ano eh, step by step. But it's more of parang... It's not your typical. expected answer of how to get rich and have like 999 million pesos this, in your bank account. This is not a financial kind of podcast. I it's, guess it wasn't. It was a mindset kind of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but it has helped us in all honesty. How to get rich in your mind. <laughs> Kakainis, no? Kakainis. Sa well, are we sa sorry to those who are expecting and to those who are happy. Then thank you for being happy to but listening. If, if you weren't happy, sorry. Let us know in the comment section. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts. As usual, we like reading the comments to these podcasts. Yeah. And they're basically a dialogue with our own thoughts. So it's nice to hear your thoughts also. They give us a different perspective. And with that, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Fofo. And I'm Bones. And this is Hashtag Behind Relationship Goals. Bye. Bye.